everyone, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute beaded charm. Ba -da -da, back on the Disney theme series, words, yeah. Today's video is a collaboration with the lovely Candies from Candyware. If you don't know who she is, where have you been? She has a wonderful channel on which she does a lot of polymer clay things, and she's done some EOS tutorials, and all of these amazing things, but today, she is dabbling in the art of needle felting. So she is going to be making a needle felted Tsum Tsum Marie and I'm making a beaded Tsum Tsum Marie because I really love Tsum Tsums as you can see by my ever growing collection back here. I have actually done a beaded Tsum Tsum before and that was also a collaboration actually and that was Eeyore which is super cute and you, you seem to like him. You seemed to like him. So um, I, I've decided to do another one, but instead of square stitch this time, I'm doing brick stitch. If you don't know how to do brick stitch, uh, that's fine. I actually have a slowed down step by step tutorial for you all that I uploaded a couple of years ago now. Whew, getting old. And yeah, that will talk you through how to do brick stitch and I will pop a link to that in the description box, as well as a link to Candy's video. So you can go and check out her video after you've watched this video. But yes, that is enough waffling from me. Let's just get on with the tutorial, shall we? Okay, so the beads that I'm using are size 11 Delica beads by the brand Mayuki. I have a size 10 beading needle and I've threaded on about 75 centimeters or so of beading thread. I actually have a lot more than that, but you only need about 75 centimeters because I was a bit overzealous. And I've got white, light pink, blue, and then a darker pink. And then starting on the row that I just indicated, um, which is the second from bottom row. We are going to ladder stitch eight beads, but we're gonna start it in a slightly different way. So um, usually you pick up two beads, you go back through the first one, and you go back through the second one, but I'm just going back through the first one. Um, we are going to leave a tail of about mm, 10 centimeters or so. Um, and you shall see why in a bit. And yes, don't forget you can pause the video at any point if you think I'm going a bit quick. Um, feel free to pause and yeah. So now I am threading my needle with the tail, um, which is the, the tail that we left, the 10 centimeter tail. And now we are going to do the very bottom row. Um, so I'm gonna pick up two beads in a second once I get my position in right. Pick up two beads and we're going to go through the third thread bridge in the row. So yeah. Yeah, there's no other way of explaining that. It's the third thread bridge in the row. So you've got the first one, second one, and we're going through the third one. Yes? Yes. And because this is technically decreasing, well, it is decreasing, um, you're going to want to go back through the beads to make sure that they sit flat. I cover this all in my Brick Stitch Basics tutorial. Um, but yeah, that should hopefully make sense if you've already watched that video. But yes, we're going to do standard brick stitch and then we're going to pick the beads, go back through the beads even um, to make sure that they sit nice and flat and everything looks parfait, which is French for perfect. It doesn't look like a dessert. I realise how that could be confusing for some people. I'm just so linguistic, you know. I'm not. I'm just... Shh. Sorry. I haven't had a tea yet today, so my voice is a bit crackly. But yeah, we're gonna brick stitch on five beads along the bottom. Um, and that's for her little chin. Oh, I just did a big yawn, how unprofessional. And um, yeah, I tried to attach, okay, stop getting ahead of myself. Thread your needle back on your working thread, which is the longer bit. And then I tried to, I had to sort out my last two beads because they were crooked as. So now we're going to pick up two more beads and we're going to increase which means going through the very th first thread bridge. I said thirst. And what's a thread bridge? The very first thread bridge and you're going to attach those two beads. Make sure everything is sat nice and straight and nothing is wiggling about too much. And then we're going to pick up a nice light pink colour for her little cheeks and thread that on. And I realize now that it's slightly difficult to see, but it is happening. Also should have used a different color thread. Hindsight. 
I'll do that next time. And then we are going to pick up another white bead. It's such a small little charm. I hadn't realized how small it was when I made the pattern. I don't know why I hadn't realized how small it was when I made the pattern. So now we're gonna pick up the slightly darker pink color for her little nose. You can do this all in a light pink if you prefer. I wish I had a darker opaque pink, more like a rosy color than the color I've used. Mine's more like a shiny fuchsia color, um, but hey, it works. And then we're going to attach another white bead. Eventually. And then we are going to attach another pink bead. You may have noticed that I actually have sorted out the focus by now because I haven't done a beadwork tutorial in such a long time I forgot how to focus my camera. <sighs> I know, I'm the worst. I'm trying my best. So yes, another light pink bead. And then we are finishing the row by increasing two, with two white beads. So you've got two white beads. You're going through the same thread bridge for both of them, so you increase on the other side. I love Aristocats, such a good Disney film. And how delicious does creme de la creme de la Edgar look? Even though I know it is just milk with a Ritz cracker. That mouse just made it look delicious. Fab! So that's your third row done. So we are going to start by picking up two white beads. We are going to decrease, so go through that second thread bridge, and then you're gonna have to go back through the beads to make sure that they sit how you want them to sit and not how they want to sit. So that just means going back down through that first bead and back up through the second bead. And that just straightens it all out. Brings them, oh, my computer's making noise. Be quiet. Runs. And so then we are going to pick up one blue bead for her eyes. Well, she, she has two eyes, but this is just the first one. For her eyes that shine like sapphires, because she takes after her mother. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Thomas O'Malley. Is it Thomas? Yeah, because it's a tomcat. Um, says that her eyes shine like sapphires. Then we are attaching two blue beads. That cat is one smooth talker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know it. Okay. So now we are going to attach the other blue eye. As one would expect. When you're watching this video, um, if you're watching it on the day that I post it, I am actually in Amsterdam and I would have been here for a couple of days. We are taking a cheeky road trip. We are finishing the row on two white beads. Um, so we're not increasing, so we're just decreasing. So you just go through that last thread bridge with one bead. You don't have to increase or do anything fancy pants because we're keeping a symmetrical. It's super cute. So cute. I do now realize that this looks a little bit like my bunny rabbit charm that I have in my Etsy shop or had. I think it's expired. Um, yeah. I don't know, I think it's super cute anyway. So now we are going to pick up two white beads and we are going to increase so through that very first thread bridge and my voice is crackling. I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea after this. Priorities, the video came first, <laughs> which is rare, usually tea comes first. Wonderful. And then I am going to brick stitch on seven more white beads for a total of nine white beads in this row. Once again, um, if you don't like that I skip ahead, then feel free to pause the video and catch up and then press play when you are ready to, so when you're at the same point that I'm at basically. So we're increasing on the other side. So we're going through the same thread bridge and wonderful stuff. And that's what she looks like, super cute. Picking up two beads, going through the second thread bridge because we are decreasing. Because we're getting towards the top of her bonds and very few people's heads get 
significantly larger as you go upwards. Although I do have an incredibly large head. Yeah. So now we are going to attach, uh, oh, I just got a message, how distracting. We, now we are going to attach six more white beads for a total of eight white beads in this row. And just attaching that last one. Don't forget to pause if you need to. Wonderful. And now we are going to pick up two white beads in a second once I've finished showing you what she looks like. Now, okay, <laughs> we're going to pick up two white beads and we're going to go through the second thread bridge because we're decreasing. If you haven't given beadwork a go, I do highly recommend it. People that have bought my bow, brick stitch bow necklace kits that I have on my Etsy shop and need to um, make more of. Oh, attach one white, uh, one pink, sorry. Um, they were pleasantly surprised at how easy it is. The only problem that beadwork you have with beadwork that one could have is tension, and you master that quite quickly. And uh, pick up one more white bead and attach that. Um, but yeah, it's honestly so simple and people tell me how difficult it is and it's truly not. So now we're going to pick up one more pink bead. Um, yeah, and if you don't have access to delicate beads, that's fine. You can use perla beads, you'll just make a larger object, um, but it works just as well. Now we're finishing the row by attaching two white beads. But yeah, you don't really have an excuse, you can use a thicker needle, you can use uh, like crochet cotton or a thin embroidery floss and perla beads and that works just as well. So no excuses team, no excuses. Give it a whirl, it's honestly so simple. So now we're picking up one white and one pink bead. We are going through that first thread bridge. We are starting on her ears and my phone just buzzed again, crumbs. And no one would think that I have lots of friends. And now we are going to attach four pink beads for the middle of her bow and because she has a little bow on her head I realize now that I should have done like the little white tufty piece of hair that the bow is attached to but I couldn't make it look good it just looked a bit weird um, so unfortunately I didn't but hey if you want to adapt the pattern, feel free to adapt the pattern and show me your adaptation. Um, I love learning new things. Wonderful stuff. Now we are going to attach another light pink bead. This is why it's important to have two colours of beads, um, otherwise you're not going to see the middle of her ear in comparison to the bow. Um, which I suppose isn't the be all and end all of life, but hey. Now we're going to increase and attach another white bead. Now how I did the ears is a bit backwards and a bit strange. Um, well, not so much the first ear, but the second ear. I didn't choose the best method of doing it, but it functioned. So picking up two white beads, we are decreasing, so go through the second thread bridge. Wonderful, and because you're decreasing, you have to go back through those beads and make sure they're all sat where you want them to be sat. And then you want to pick up another pink bead, the dark pink bead. We are done with the light pink beads now. Wonderful, and then you want to go down through the next pink bead. Nope, that's a white bead. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to want to go down through the next white bead and up through the following white bead and pick up a white bead and then go down through that first, that second white bead again. Oh my goodness. You can see what I'm doing. I'm creating a triangle. And that's so we can make the little point on the top of her ear. Cute. And now this is me just counting along. So I'm like down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so you're going to go down through the first pink bead. And what I would actually recommend doing is just weaving your way across 
until you get to the end of the row and then come up out of the white bead and repeat what you've just done on the first ear but backwards um, or the same way if you turn your work around but um, sorry if you can hear jingling my bracelet um, what I foolishly did is I came out of the pink bead you'll see what I did I just did it in a really backwards way clearly I didn't have my head screwed on and um, you can kind of see as I'm trying to work out what I'm doing in life so I'm attaching one I picked up one white bead and one pink bead I went through the thread bridge just before the one that I came out of and then I thought oh how am I gonna attach this next white bead so I went down through the white bead and that last pink bead of the row before like I say the easier way is to just continue weaving until you come out of that last white bead I don't know why I did it in this way I don't know what I did and then I picked up another white bead and then I ladder stitched it on I don't know why <laughs> I've never done this before as in I've done brick stitch before but I've never done this method before so I don't know why I thought it was a good idea it worked um, and then pick up a white bead and attach that and then you're just gonna sew in your ends following the pattern of your beadwork so you're sewing in both this end and your tail and try your hardest not to break any beads get a smaller beading needle um, which is the story of my life get a smaller beading needle Hannah and yeah just sew it in and make it work which is what I did here yeah so yeah I would not recommend that method of attaching your ears just keep weaving your way along until you get to the very end of the row and then attach the other ear in the same way that you did the first ear but yeah I'm just going to continue sewing in the ends of my thread I'm going to trim off the excess and then that is it so now you know how easy it is to make your very own cute beaded Marie charm. She will be really nice as earrings, she'd be a nice brooch, she'd be a nice necklace, she'd be a nice um, hair clip. I can't think of anything else you could make with it. I'm sure there are things, like a nose guard, I don't know what's happening to me. I haven't had a tea this morning, that's what's happening to me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did happen to enjoy it, it would mean a lot to me if you gave this video a thumbs up. It just lets me know that you like it and it makes me happy inside and out. And if you want to see more of my videos uh, pop up in your subscription feed, then all you have to do is click subscribe. That's as easy as it gets. It's completely free and amazing and and yeah, this week's bonus videos were very knitting based. So on Tuesday, I talked about knitting on a plane and all of that jazz. And then on Thursday, I showed you how I knit. It's not a knitting tutorial per se, it's just kind of like how I hold the needles because I get questions about it all the time in my crafty chats. So yeah. I am trying to reach the goal of 50,000 subscribers in 2016, which seems ridiculous and so far away, but at the same time, not that far away at all. So prove me wrong, um, let me know that I'm not being unrealistic with my goal and help me get there. Thanks. If you do want to recreate anything using one of my tutorials, then please feel free to post a picture on social media using the hashtag The Corner of Craft so I can check it out for myself, see how amazing you all are. It truly means the world to me. And don't forget that this video was a collaboration with Candice from Candyware, who does a wonderfully wide range of tutorials and has done a needle felted Marie. So head on over to her video and check that out. Link can be found in the description box of this video so go over there show us some love show her that you care la 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 my camera's running out of battery don't forget to check out my other beaded disney characters videos i have quite a few of them now so feel free to check them out i will pop them all in a playlist for your convenience and the link to that can also be found in the description but basically check out the description box everything you could ever need to know ever in the world is down there including where i got all of my beads and other bits supplies there we go, supplies to make this lovely little beaded charm. Thank you so much once again for watching this tutorial and I shall see you very soon in Tuesday's video. Bye.
it's Hannah and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute crocheted strawberry. It's a form of crochet called amigurumi for those who don't know. 